Well, at least I had some experience in this airplane before I had my first emergency in it. This episode will debrief what happened. And right back we started. That was actually pretty good. Epic. The oil just went to 250. Oh, sh This is bad. Uh-oh. Are you idle? That's what's happening. Yeah, dude, we're going idle, man. The cause was unique and unexpected, and we're drilling down into it with an engineer from Garmin. Yeah, definitely a, a pretty spooky uh, event. Yeah. The, the video is really interesting. Um, I like the thinking throughout and, and really handling it as an engine failure or a imminent engine problem, engine failure. What's our closest airport? Is Chatham closer? Uh, I think, let's just go back to Windsor. Oh, I can't do it if I got 250 oil. Red line's 235. We captured and shared the build of this aircraft over two years. It's been flying for about 18 months now, and my crew and I have logged over 150 hours on it. The latest milestone was getting the paint job done just before Air Venture 2022. All the control surfaces had to be removed, so Dave did a complete test flight before I flew it home, and he had a similar problem with the oil temperature running away. But unlike my situation, he was directly over the airport. About halfway through the test flight, oil temperature started climbing and it hit 252 out of nowhere. Like the oil cooler has to be blocked by something. That was probably the most unnerved I was, I've ever been. Most of my concern wasn't landing. It was like, I don't want to pop this engine. I yeah, don't want to pop the engine. It was, the fear was entirely of breaking the airplane and not getting back on the ground safe. I knew I had that insurance. I'd done the bulk of the work on the annual inspection myself. So the cause of this problem is probably my fault. That's the only oh, thing that's I hot, test, yeah. and I pulled it. Uh, you know what it could also be? Scan Maybe... tubing. It's not connected? It came off. Look at it, it's blown off. Yeah, yeah. That'll do it, and create that absolute runaway condition that I knew was happening. You guys never disconnected that, right? We wrap it in plastic and don't breathe on it. Yeah, we so just... no, that's not you, it's just, I, we had that all apart for the annual. So it only flew like, what, three times since the annual? Okay. I got it. There's your problem, sir. So yeah, that's on me, and I'd unknowingly flown it here with that pipe clamp loose. That tube came off of that. There's the pipe clamp, still pretty hot. That's the problem, right there. So I've got lots of great content coming, covering the process of getting the airplane painted at Evoke Aviation in Alabama, the solo IFR missions that I flew to get down there and then cloud surfing on the way home was just such an awesome reminder of why I got the instrument rating, and I'm so glad to be able to share this stuff. And if you're wondering why I chose this paint scheme, the Canadian Aviation Museum is a huge part of why this aircraft exists. I'm super proud to be a member of the flight crew there, and the RV-14, on top of being the official Flight Shops aircraft, is also going to be a support plane for the fleet there. It's been an honor to have the opportunity to get checked out on these Warbird trainers, and soloing the T-6 Harvard was a lifelong dream of mine. So I knew right from the start that I wanted the RV-14 to be an honorary Yellowbird. So I had this scheme design that was reminiscent of the Warbird trainer look, but had some modern flares because the airplane isn't pretending to be one. And it's going to be available to Yellowbird crew members to get checked out and learn the advanced avionics. Dave is the chief pilot here, and Andre, who also has a ton of time on that steering behind us, is going to learn how to fly it. There's not too much travel on the rudder pedals, it's kind of cool. You don't need extreme amount. No, it's a tight coupled airplane, yeah. Very nice. It's going to finish the rest of that list, so this fuel pump's going to come on. Half flap's going to be open because it's hot. Prop is full fine, mixture can go rich on the runway. Time is uh, 55, call 56. Tower, Fox Trot, Charlie Golf Alpha holding short, 07, ready to go. Fox Trot, Charlie Golf Alpha, winds of tower, roger, right turn out, not above 1,700 feet till advised. Wind 060 at 6, clear takeoff runway 07. Clear takeoff 07, right turn out, not above 1700, and try to go up. So the takeoff, it all happens real fast, so, um, I got this thing. If you can just hold on to that, I'll deal with that in a minute. Perfect. Among other things, I intended to do some testing of the new 4-flight Sentry Plus, but didn't get very far into that due to the emergency. So I bugged the uh, restriction because we're going to get there so fast. Yeah. It'll beep at us when we get within 200 feet of it. Cool. So I got the runway hitting bug, I got the restriction bugged, but uh, we'll be hand flying. Copy. I'm, I'm going to give it to you as soon as it's in the air, okay? Copy. What are we cruising at? We're going to climb at 110. And, and 
then we can pitch. We're going to pitch. It's going to be there so fast. We'll pitch down. I'll take the power settings once we're level. Copy. And then uh, it'll just accelerate to like 160. Uh -huh. Okay, ready to go? Ready. Mixture rich. Here we go. So it's going to be power and then stick forward almost at the same time. Tail comes up. Airspeed's alive. Check pressure and temperature. We like it. And then we're all ready to fly. So I'm just <laughs> gently rotate and then we're good to go. I could have waited a little longer for that rotate because we're heavier. Yeah, you got ballast. Okay, so you take it. Sure. My I'm point. Time for 110. I'm going to pull the power back in a second. Okay. And he's got us cleared for a right turn out. Yeah, so that was a stressful flight. It'll be a good debrief, and I'm looking forward to sharing this kind of info with people just to understand this, how this technology works, because it is very cool. Let me, um, let me bring up the chart that I was looking at. I'll share my screen real quick here. So that's my data right there? Yeah, th yeah this is one yeah. of the first things we looked at was, uh, <laughs> is this a realistic change in, in oil temperature? You know, I, I just don't think there's any realistic scenario where it jumps like that. For the oil to go from 208 to 258 in a matter of seconds, I mean, I still had to treat it as an imminent engine failure based on the information I had. Right. Let's talk about the technology involved here and how, how these probes work. Yeah, these, these probes are uh, RTDs. It stands for resistive thermal devices. and what they are just uh, basically resistors that vary uh, their resistance with temperature in a um, predictable manner. Uh, so at zero degree C, they read 100 ohms across the two leads. And for every one degree C, they heat up. Uh, they increase in resistance by 0.38505 ohms and vice versa. As they do decrease in temperature, they decrease at that same rate in resistance. So uh, we can reliably measure the resistance across the leads and determine the temperature. So. Uh, where you can run into problems is between the sensor and the box that's reading the sensor, any kind of additional resistance introduced into the lines can kind of cause what, what we saw on your flight. Electronics, it's awesome, but you got to understand what you're dealing with, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it really was uh, relieving looking at that graph. Uh, you know, it really is obvious that that's not a realistic spike in temperature. Um, it's almost instantaneous. Right. We, we had thought through that before we got on the phone with you that first day, and it, it really almost ruled out any kind of actual problem with the engine, but we still wanted to kind of cover yeah. all the bases, so. And I mean, of course, at the time on board, you can't have access to that level of information. You have to assume you're dealing with a real situation. Luckily, my issue was just instrumentation. So we'll let that play out and debrief what I did well and what I could have done better while exploring how it happened and what we did to fix it. Trailer Golf Alpha Tower identified, not above 2,500 feet in the zone. Not above 2,500, so I go five. Keep going to 2-5? Correct. Copy. You can start the right turn if you want. Sure. Do a right turn. And we'll just follow the shoreline and then I'll set up for the RNAV. It looks like our ceiling disappeared, so that's nice. Oh, what a sexy beast. But if you want, since we got the ceiling, we could do acro first. But we'll get out there. So just level off at 25. I'll pull the power back. I had a whole bunch of objectives planned for today's flight, including getting Andre some initial familiarization with the airplane, but I also wanted to make use of him as a safety pilot while I practiced some instrument procedures. And then before heading back, we were going to do some aerobatics, and I was going to use the Sentry Plus to capture the track log and compare that to the panel track log. Okay, so I was thinking we were going to have to kill time to get a better ceiling, but looks like we're good once yeah, we get out there. So it should fly pretty hands off once it's nicely trimmed. I'm, I'm setting it up. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, she's such a beauty. Where's that thing I handed you? Uh, you want, oh, right here. There you go. Thanks. Uh, I think I could, you could get used to this, you know? I mean, life is hard, but it feels like we're so low because we're going so fast. Yeah. It feels well, rough. I mean, yeah, so if you want to climb now, we're outside of everything, so. Let's give her, let's go have a look at these clouds. So obviously this episode won't get into talking about the Sentry Plus very much, but we are giving one away, along with a bunch of other cool stuff, including an iPad mount and a camera mount from Ram mounts, which you've seen me using for years. So check that out at flightchops.com slash contest. Okay, so this iPad is talking to the Garmin panel. I'm going to get this iPad talking to... Uh... In a future episode, I'll cover some more details about my thoughts on the Sentry Plus, but for now, obviously that didn't happen. You want me to go above this? It looks like we're... I think so. Let's, let's, let's go have a look-see. I mean, there's no harm, right? No, it's wide open here. Yeah, we can climb a little faster just because the oil's going hot, so just put pitch us, like... Oh, I got you. Higher airspeed. Um, 130, 135? Yeah. We got scads of rate, like we're still easily going 500 feet a minute. Yeah, we just want to try to keep that oil under 220. 
go up, up above this stop and play. Let's let's have a look. And if we want to talk to Detroit, we could do that. 134.3. I believe so, yep. Yeah. The root of the problem comes down to avoiding introducing extra resistance into the lines. So what are we doing here? We got some potentially suspect crimps here. So loose, dirty, or corroded connections typically covers causes of that. Yeah, interestingly enough, I think it, they were the overly secured and then not enough flex, you get the vibration and then... Dave redid it with knife connectors and he also noticed there was tension. So right. we kind of created some more slack because, you know, that engine moves and things are going yeah. on there. So they're knife connectors. So they basically scissor together and they make a very strong connection. It's a good example of wire strain contributing to a premature failure of a termination also. Two good crimps. The day after, when everything was cooled down, obviously the engine was not running, but I turned the panel on. I had an oil temp reading of 92 Fahrenheit, yeah. but an OAT of 22C, which is like 72 Fahrenheit. So it's like, oh, we're off by 20. And then we jiggled the wires, which I didn't get on camera, and it snapped right to 72. It's like, so something was going on with that connection that I guess when I pulled four Gs created that additional resistance or yeah whatever. exactly you know when you're pulling four g's we can look at a picture of the connection that you've got there but that was kind of the first thing that comes into my mind is between the sensor and the gea24 eis box are there any connections in line there that's typically where you'll find the culprit it's true for thermocouples and different sensors that we use you know we had the spade connector in line there looking at the picture you can kind of see there's a little bit of wire strain you've got some tie wraps on either side of the spade connectors and pulling four g's there's quite a bit of force going on uh, and that could be what ultimately led to whatever ended up happening. You see that once it's shrink wrapped, it shouldn't let it go. It's funny, we could not reproduce it, but the fact of the matter is it happened and we got it to happen again once in the hangar. That was enough to say, redo the connectors. Yeah, for sure. It's snug, check in. Now I'm gonna check the panel. Make sure we get a temperature of about 80 degrees or so. Oh, the oil. Use a heat gun, shrink those down, zip time up, all that fun stuff. Correct. Okay, so back on board with Andre. We're about to have the emergency, and here's a pro tip. I wasn't sure if he was going to get nauseous because he doesn't have a lot of aerobatic experience, so I had him work in the radios, basically just gave him a job, which I find works well for passengers if you are worried they might get nauseous. But uh, that ended up working out that he just stayed on the radios throughout the emergency. Yeah, so just let them know we're gonna just orbit around and stuff. We're not gonna go anywhere. Alpha Squawk 5371, and I think I see you about, let's say, 35 miles southeast of Selfridge uh, via FAR 8100 indicated. That's us, uh, Fox Star Charlie, Golf Alpha. And we're just looking to orbit in this area. We're not traveling anywhere. Start sounds good. How much farther west do you think you're going from where you're at? Maybe 10 miles? Uh, maybe 10 miles, uh, like east and west of our current position. All right, sounds good. Thank you much. Let me know you're ready back to Windsor. Foxtrot, Charlie, call Papa. All right, so I'm going to record track log on both of these things. So it's a little weird to do it without section lines and stuff to uh, orient, but I feel like i got a pretty good horizon out here. So obviously I didn't end up with much aerobatic flying to debrief here, but this is what I would have been doing. I love using Clatahoy to look at the details of a flight, and in this case it is actually a really well executed loop, so I'm pretty happy with that one. I might have actually given it too much right rudder, as you can see based on the way it tracks, although that could have also been wind. And since both of us have Garmin watches, we've actually got some additional information, so it's fun to look at our heart rates. But both of us seem to have a heart rate drop after the incident, which is interesting. All right, how you feeling? Uh, real good, 100% at this point. All right, yeah, so, three, five, nine, good evening. So aerobatics so checklist is, uh, cool. ESP hey, disabled. Hey, there you go. That's the uh, fun switch. We made sure everything is secure. The, uh, I am tight. The fire extinguisher is secure. Uh, is secure. Uh, phone is secure. All right, so we got the oil back down to 209, so that's feeling better. All right, so the beauty of this airplane is you can loop it from level flight. So we'll start with a loop, okay? So <laughs> it's going to be a 4G pole. Good. And uh, we'll just do a loop. Let me tighten this up. I've been looking around, so I know there's no one else up here, and we're on following. I mean, you shouldn't need any... We're not going to do anything. It should be positive the yeah. whole way? Yeah. Cool, copy. You ready? Are you ready? Ready, sir.
Unbelievable. Traffic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right back we started. That was actually pretty good. So sick. I didn't look at the G meter, but I got to four, so. Epic. The oil just went to 250. Oh, shit. Doing a little hot? Oh, we blew the thing off again. No. This is bad. Uh-oh. Are you idle? That's why it's popping. Yeah, dude, we're going idle, man. I got you guys on the phone pretty quick after that all happened. Yeah. And, and also I got like homing in the conversation because I, I didn't know if I cooked my engine. So this was the first thing I thought happened. I thought this had blown off. So that's where the oil cooler is right down there. So the airflow comes in through here, goes in through that scat tube down to the oil cooler. The second thing I thought was maybe there's like a bird nest or something in here. So I took this off and it was clear and I could see light coming through all the ribs. Like I even got underneath, I shone a flashlight up and through here. So the oil cooler was clear. So in my mind, you can hear me talking about it when it happened, I'm like, I'm certain it was a scat tube again. And in this case, I also know there's no way I'm getting home if that's the case, because when it happened to Dave, he was directly above the airport yeah. and he pulled it to idle and he still couldn't get it. I think it was still like 240, even taxiing back. He was still over the red line taxiing back. Okay, we're going down to 250, 248. It was almost like the perfect, like that's what would have happened in a simulator when an instructor like flicks a switch to make some bad thing look like you got to deal with it. Yeah. That was the exercise. You have a imminent engine failure, deal with it. It was nicely done, honestly. The, the video is, is really interesting to watch. What I noticed didn't happen was a, the cast message was not thrown. And that's just a configuration setting in your G3X touch. So you can set just a red band where it's just the color on the gauge or you can set the red band plus alert. And at that point, when it crosses that threshold, it's going to give you a oral alert through your headset and flash a cast message to make it more apparent that you're out of spec on that engine sensor. We also have a, a LED on the panel, which didn't turn red at the time, but I think that is connected to the plus alert. It is, right? It's connected to the cast message. So because there wasn't a cast message there, you didn't get that master, master warning. Uh, but yeah, that was one thing that it, watching the video in real time, there was this period of time where the gauge ran up and the pilot didn't notice. The oil just went to 250. Oh, shit. So that big blinking light, if that had gone off, I think that would have alerted you to the problem a little sooner. Oh yeah, if I got an audible alert plus a cast message, yeah. it would have been no no delay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was talking to Andre about, hey look, I we ended up where we started. I was all proud of my loop, it was a good <laughs> loop, and we were right back at the same altitude, and I'm talking about the G-meter. And then I noticed the red. Right. So however many seconds went by, at least I scanned it, but absolutely I didn't catch it instantly. For that point, I was definitely in hand flying aerobatic sure, mode. Yeah. Um, so I was really looking at my, you know, G meter and, and so on. So I wasn't as concerned about the engine specs, but I definitely got there. So absolutely we have since changed it because you can also see when I flick the ESP inhibit switch, I get a, a LED, which we made for ESP inhibit and a cat. there's also a cast message for that. That's gonna be a debrief point for me as well, is that I stayed in hand flying mode for the entire rest of that flight, just cause I was kind of there. Um, but I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> autopilot should have been leveraged while I troubleshot. There's no reason why I didn't, couldn't have used the autopilot. I just didn't. Sure, yeah. Uh, if wind is favoring the straight in. We, we could just go straight in two five, but, but it's gonna be a hard tailwind, can you? But how hot, Let, let's get the winds, let's check that. Wind zero, penetration kilo, weather two one zero zero zero, wind zero seven zero at five, visibility nine, three thousand six hundred few, six thousand yeah. static. Zero seven zero at five, it's not it's factor. Altimeter three zero zero zero. It's a super long runway. I don't think I can add power. Like if I add power it's gonna come up. Wind zero penetration. Oh yeah, yeah. Zero seven zero at five. Are you okay with straight in two five? So it's a five not tailwind? Yeah. At most it quickly became apparent that I had this kind of tiny window of like, I can have this many inches of manifold pressure, whatever it was, like 14 or 15 inches, and it's right below red line. That'll get me enough to limp it home and I won't be descending as steeply. It became clear, okay, we will make it home assuming I can keep these power settings, but that's all I got. It might not have ever happened if you didn't hit uh, 3.9 Gs also. It might have been just happy and, you know, uh, in a smaller envelope. Yeah, but I mean, that's what the airplane is for, yeah. so I definitely <laughs> want it I want it set up to, yep. it's, that's, I literally, that, I call that the fun switch when I flip that ESP inhibit. 
I'm in fun mode. Right. <laughs> it, it's such a great platform for instrument flying and cross country. But then at the same time, it's just awesome for flicking the fun switch and going upside down and having fun. So you can take the radios and let them know the situation that we're uh, dealing with the uh, hot oil, so we want to get it down. We're stable, but we don't really want to stay in the air too long. Gotcha. So yeah, we get the big spike and we get the drastic drop. Um, I think that the resistance was introduced here um, at this high G maneuver, which is what the red line is. So whenever you pulled this three to four Gs, that was enough to modify that termination at that spade connector yep. and introduce some resistance into the line. And it remained there throughout the flight because I don't think this is realistic after you pulled power. We're up at 240 there. Yeah, with the tower, Charlie Golf Alpha, with our request, uh, could we do a straight into five? We just, uh, we're monitoring our oil and we're not too happy with the current situation. Charlie Golf Alpha, tower, Roger Runway 25, cleared straight in, and are you able to keep the speed up? You'll be ahead of an RJ about uh, 23 mile final for 25, currently uh, showing a minute ahead of them. Can't add power, so no. Um, I think just what we're holding now, and but we're still pretty quick. We're not going to slow down significantly much from what we're doing now. So we can't have Charlie Golf Alpha, Roger. It should uh, work out fine then, and uh, if you'd prefer just a slant final for 2-5 from uh, your position, that works. Thank you very much for the help. Uh, we'll do that. Charlie Golf Alpha. I think I did a good job handing off radio work to my, my co-pilot yeah. to kind of get, get that out of my way. That'll be a debrief point because he was a little bit too verbose with some of his calls. I think he was trying to be chill, but it didn't change my plan as far as what I wanted to do. If it was me, I would have said unable. Uh, you know, if I need to declare, I'm going to declare, but I'm going straight in right. and I'm maintaining. Like this is all I got. I got as much power as I've got. I'm hanging right below the red line of the temp, and that's all I can do. I'm trying to think of what I could have missed, but I don't think I missed anything. I can't think of anything. This is a bit strange, but it's stable. It came down. So well, that's good. Yeah, so that doesn't imply to me that the SCAT 2 blew because when it blew, Dave couldn't even get it below 240 at idle. Charlie Golf Alpha Tower, do you need any assistance or anything on the ground or uh, everything okay in the air? You're just monitoring for now? Oh, we're just monitoring. We just wanted to kind of get down quicker soon rather than later. Charlie Golf Alpha Roger, number one, runway 25. Wind is currently 080 at 3. Check remarks. Thanks a lot for the help. Charlie Golf Alpha. Gas racers, tanks, under carriage, down, mixture, light and variable, altimeter, two, nine or nine or eight. Yeah, temp's going up. We're just descending a little bit. I know, temp's going up, I don't really want to. And hold short of runway 30 on Alpha for now. Okay, on uh, 2998, we'll talk to you. What's the lowest speed you would go with? 90. And uh, hold short 30. So the problem is, as I slow down, it gets hot. Gotcha. Well, keep the descent going, it's fine. Oh, I got too much lower this far, though. Caution, terrain. Caution. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. 228 is not bad. Terrain ahead. Red line's 235. So, I guess I'm in a bit of a cop the corner here as far as I don't want to add power. And I don't want to slow down. I'll get it to 100 for flaps in a second, and then I'm going to pull power and land. Sure. That's stable 229. That's good news. i to go up as soon as I slow down, though. Charlie Golf Alpha Tower, wind 050 at 4. Clear to land, runway 25. Plan to exit Foxtrot. Clear to land 25. We'll plan for Foxtrot, Charlie Golf Alpha. You want to try and exit India? Like if you're aiming for... Oh, I'll just land long and exit Fox Cut. Copy. Okay, well it's coming down. 269 ground, just use caution for that uh, Tomahawk off your left. I'm not speaking to them. Okay, we'll uh, keep uh, going. Oil went down. Good news. One degree, yeah, but this is not normal. It should not be this hot. No way. Oh, something's wrong. 269 ground, continue taxi Alpha. I took off with five ports. To runway 30. That's lots. Contact tower 124.7, holding short of runway 07. So those are my main ones for my self critiques, but I'm sure happy with that landing. It's probably one of the best landings. <laughs> it was a tailwind. Under pressure, yeah. <laughs> That's under carriage, make your props, which is I'm secure, you're secure. Copy. Wind check 050 at five. Thanks. Winter Tower, Jazz, 359 with you, visual to Peppa. Jazz, 
Airspeed descending? Yep. 75 over the fence with uh, full flaps. That's what you want. 75, 74? Yep. Very nice. Very nice. So thanks for watching, and until the next one, keep your flight chops sharp. Very nice, sir. Yeah, that was stressful, man. Indeed. We're actually going to be turning this into a scenario for the TFP Ground School app. If you haven't seen that, they're doing some really cool stuff with this, and I'm proud to be a part of it. You get full access with the free trial, and the app is also going to be part of this month's giveaway. So I'm looking forward to seeing who wins that one, and thanks again for watching.